honor for me to uh, host uh, John Lacroote this week in, in Linz, and uh, I'm in particular happy that he agreed to give actually two talks. This uh, last week in Vienna, he only gave one talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then, on the other hand, there were twice as many people. And uh, okay, so this brings us to the organization matters. So this is a two part talk, like, uh, it will last probably like two and a half hours altogether. And one hour is uh, actually a technical talk. It's about the experience of SAD um, from Don Kuhn. Well, he was working on a, a new uh, volume or section of his uh, art of computer programming. And then the, the, the second uh, part of, the, of uh, this event will take place around 11.30. And there will be a short break for everybody to refresh your himself. And, and then there will still be an answer uh, and question uh, session. So, so you might already start uh, noting down questions of all kinds, of course, from philosophical questions to uh, computer science questions. And, and then we'll uh, need to schedule this in one way or the other, so we'll see. Uh, but first, let me uh, introduce one of those to you. So he's, of course, probably really well known to everybody, so I'll keep, keep it. Uh, brief. So he won lots of prizes, the Turing Award, and uh, is well known in the field, probably the father of uh, 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 Emerson analysis. He, he invented the LRK uh, parsing scheme, and uh, most he's most known probably for his uh, kind of computer science Bible, which I bought immediately when, when I was a student. And the interesting part about this is I wanted to mention this, I also told Don, Don about this. The first volume appeared in 1968, so I was one year old, and uh, also this university just started to, to exist. So in some sense, this, this volume is still continuing, so, so the first part of the talk will actually be a contribution to this volume, which, which is kind of going on as long as this university. So please, welcome to our Yeah, okay, so now, 
uh, if, if, if you if you uh, if you look way down the corner here, it, it gives you the URL from FASCO 5A. You just change the 5 to a 6, and you get FASCO 6A. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, and that's the one that, uh, uh, that that you really want to get uh, about satisfied bills. Although this one is this one is interesting too, but that you know, <laughs> mathematical topics that I wish I knew when I had written in Part 1 in 1968. Um, okay, so um, I've already downloaded that, um, uh, and I don't remember how to do it on this machine. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see if I, if I go, if I go here and, uh, and for example, I, 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 can, I can do that by saying classical 6a, dot, and, and, and then um, <coughs> it will, uh, you know, it, it, it'll give it to me, but I've already downloaded it. Well, I might as well, <laughs> I might as well download it again, why not? Computers work so fast. Let's go. Okay, so um, now let's take a look at it. Um, and. Uh, Well, just you, are, you can click on the green arrow in the right. Here? No, no. Oh, this guy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah. I can do the side. Well, let's let's see the. Uh, I, I can magnify it a little bit, so there must be a way to magnify this. Um, the width fifth page. Uh, I think I know I should use the I should use the term of Macaulay Bins. <laughs> so uh, do I have maybe I already have it on one of these uh, pages. Yeah. No. Um so, so can you press this feet page. Excuse me? What? This one this one. <coughs> Problem. 
In fact, I didn't have a, when I, when I found this, uh, uh, this book um, in 1962, when I'm writing compilers, I had no idea I would ever be writing about satisfiability. Um, but uh, uh, in the last 20 years, it's just turned out to be one of the, one of the, one of the key things. Um, so, so uh, I want to just walk you through now some of the pages that are that, that, as, that, that are written, all the, and then there are, there are holes in, uh, at, in the parts that I'm still working on. So at the beginning, we I, I have I, I have the normal um, uh, uh, introductory comments about about uh, uh, getting started on simple satisfiability problems, and I and I. I um, and I have a really nice uh, couple of examples at the beginning that, that are easy to, easy to visualize. Um, and then already, um, the, uh, the, even the simple example of these problems that are way beyond our credit capability of solving, uh, solving the problem, uh, all the question marks in this table. Um, well, probably some of these will, uh, will never be solved in, uh, in the history of mankind because get, some of the problems get really hard, but, but the ones that are close to the edge here are, 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 uh, uh, are challenges for, for the next generation. Um, so, um, and one of the, so, so, so I start out by talking about a whole bunch of, of, of examples that are, uh, Easy to understand and, and I think uh, instructive. Also, also they, they, they illustrate the uh, satisfiability problem quite nicely. This one is it, it's a map coloring problem. I'm trying to co color this map with, with, with four color, and and it's turned out to have a very, very interesting history. <coughs> um, then I go to um, uh, uh, the, um, some application to, to multiplication. I'm, I'm going to show you in, in detail more about multiplication as we get going. Um, but you want to multiply a, uh, uh, an n bit number by an n bit number, and, uh, and, and this can be captured in satisfiability too, um, and, as we see. Then, then uh, what, suppose you've got a multiplier in your computer, uh, but you want to uh, uh, know if it's working properly. Uh, it's part of the chip, but maybe there's some some extra wires, uh, some, some extra sh things shorting out in the chip. So, so, so we want to uh, uh, test it for faults. So here I have a, a very simple multiplier where I'm only multiplying a two a two bit number by a, by a three bit number x one x two y one y two y three. I'm getting a five bit uh, uh, product uh, z one to z five. And uh, and and then each of the wires in that in that circuit might might short out uh, or, or be stuck at a, at, at a value either either always on or always on. And so uh, uh, we want to find a small number of test cases that will that will that will uh, that for, plug in these x and y's. And if, if, if they uh, um, if, if there's any any one wire that's 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 uh, uh, stuck at either zero or, or, or one, then uh, these test cases will, will, will um, uh, one, at least one of those test cases is going to do it. And uh, here I have an example of uh, of, of different uh, outputs that happen if if different wires are stuck. Um, in this particular case, there's I don't know something like 50 wires that are in different faults you can have. Um, and, and so then I, um, I've got to find examples that are going to, uh, I guess that was only on one example. Um, so, so this turns out to be a, a, a very important tax that we call music in the industry. Uh, and uh, uh, in order to solve it faster, we, we had we, we a little uh, extra. The next example I have is it's about learning, and uh, and here we have a. Uh, oops, uh, let me see if I can if I can uh, get that table on the screen all by itself. Uh, 
right. This seems to be, yeah, okay. So here, here we have a function that, uh, that, that uh, uh, I, we know this function's inside a black box, and, and we happen to know its value at, at, at these particular numbers, I think 16 numbers, uh, it, the function is 1, and, and at these 16 numbers is 0. And uh, it turns out that, that uh, um, the very simple formula that accounts for all, the, all that data. And, uh, and, uh, so it's very easy to set up a satisfiability problem that will that will come up with uh, uh, formula like this for the day. Um, and uh, so you might think, well, that's pretty that's pretty amazing because uh, the chance of being right in 32 cases is is, is one over two to 32. That's a, you know, that's one in four billion. So, so it's, it's a pretty simple formula. So you can imagine it's correct, but actually uh, uh, that could you couldn't be more wrong, but uh, uh, because uh, uh, I have a secret uh, behind how I, how I generated this table, and, uh, and it's revealed if you read the book. <coughs> uh, so, uh, but, but, we, but anyway, it leads to a, a family of interesting problems here. I, I, I had only 32 uh, points in that training set. If I, if, if I give myself, if that, if that function I showed you before was really the, the function, then I can choose a, a, a bunch of random points and, and come up with a, and give it to a set, a set solver and ask it to, uh, you know, say, you know, I, this is a, a simple function, um, so, so tell me what, which one it is. And, and it almost always uh, uh, gives you the right answer. Here's a case where it, it, it almost gives the right answer, but it had a little bit more complicated to make this one turn a little bit harder. Okay. So the next part that I'm writing about is the part that uh, one of the things that uh, I uh, was involved with the, uh, in the original discovery, and, uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons I'm here in Linz uh, talk, uh, uh, because, uh, uh, in fact, uh, 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 this is this is a working week for me, uh, where I, I, in general, I, I've been looking forward for a long time to come to the, to the World Center of Research and Satisfiability. And, and uh, so uh, I'm trying to fill, I'm trying to pick, pick the brains of everybody here that, <laughs> that I need and make sure I get this, this, uh, uh, this story right. Um, now, uh, okay, so, so I'm writing that, and then, but then I talk, so, so I, basically then I give a whole bunch of examples why we, why we want to have a SAP solver. Now it's time to talk about how to, set, how to solve it. And uh, so I start out with a very simple algorithm uh, that that I, you can code it in, a, in, in a, a few hours, um, and uh, and that's just just uh, it works nicely on small problems, uh, and uh, and it's, it's better than than, than brute force. And, and I'll show you actually how this algorithm works, and uh, we'll walk through a little bit. Um, uh, but, but anyway, that's the next part of the story. And then uh, uh, it, it turned out that, uh, that, that we, can, um, uh, we can improve on that method and, and get an even simpler one by using something called lazy data structures, which were invented in the course of studying set probably. And so that instead of algorithm B, we have algorithm I'm sorry, so the algorithm A, we have algorithm B, which is, uh, uh, which, which is an amazingly short program that, 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 solves, that, that solves not too large satisfiability uh, problems uh, uh, quite nicely. Okay, then I, I, then I go also to a, um, to a, 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 an algorithm that goes for the larger problems. That, and 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 uh, uh, so I talk about what, uh, you know, what what you want to do if you want to go beyond the really simple algorithms and and, uh, and then and then part I haven't written yet but I've written the code we'll talk about um, beefing this up until, until we get a, a, a world class set solo for some for some of the problem. The next part of the expedition is about random case. Um, and here, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, 
story also gets extremely interesting when we, when we choose a satisfiability problem at random. And, uh, the, and the, uh, there's uh, thousands of research papers looking at this because once you, once you see this problem, you get hooked on it. You start wondering, right? you, you see the way, uh, uh, the way solution processes go as you're solving it. It's, it's, a, little bit, it's a little bit like um, watching a, uh, a nuclear reaction. Um, because uh, 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 sort of chain reactions start to happen as you as you try setting one variable to zero, and then that affects its neighbors, and and uh, so it's, it's really uh, uh, it, it, uh, lots of physicists are interested in in uh, phenomena associated with random set problem. Uh, okay, so. Uh, after I've talked about random set problems, there's also random ways of, um, uh, 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 well, well, I guess I'm, I'm going into resolution, uh, which is a, which is a uh, important aspect of logic that that turns out to, to explain uh, uh, what, why uh, what, why some problems are inherently hard for, for these set solvers. And also suggest ways to uh, to speed them up. Um, so here we have lower bounds saying that that these set that this algorithm A, A and B and D that I showed you before uh, couldn't possibly solve certain problems that um, because we, uh, as 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 n gets larger, we know that the running time blows up exponentially. Um, and then, but then using the resolution, uh, there's there's very good methods, um, uh, and one of them, in fact, uh, uh, that I'm presenting in the book, I've never published before. Uh, Steve Cook showed it to his class in Toronto in 1972, but uh, uh, and it went in the notes and went into a couple of student theses. But but, it, uh, uh, but it's amazing. Uh, it's amazingly simple and. and uh, uh, and, and also amazingly close to, to uh, some of the best modern modern ones. So I, so I use this as an as an introduction to, to the modern techniques that uh, that, that uh, uh, self satisfiability by by uh, what's called conflict driven plasma. <coughs> um, and again, here I'm, I'm the section that, I, that I'm writing now, and uh, and and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, after that, then there's also random random ways to get it. To say, say uh, if, if you don't have a solution, well, just uh, flip some of the variables from zero to one or one to zero, and, and maybe maybe then you have a solution. And uh, and this also works in, uh, on lots of problems uh, amazingly well. Um, but we'll see that it doesn't work very well on the second problem. And. Um, and, and I mentioned physicists who uh, are uh, uh, studying random problems. They have developed something called, oh, okay, Waxat is a really, it, it's a nice algorithm for random, it's one of the nice algorithms for random solving in it, and it uses a, a fascinating sequence called reluctant doubling that, that I discuss here. Um, but now, that, now I have a, 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 a 10 pages that go. Cool, Outside of the realm of side solving into general combinatorics. And one of the most important uh, uh, techniques used in combinatorial uh, studies uh, to, to show that things exist is called the local lemma, which uh, comes from this part of the world. Uh, but uh, but uh, Lasse Rojas uh, and Paul Erdős. Uh, uh, came up with this in the 70s, and uh, and and just uh, just two or three years ago, um, uh, Rob, uh, Rob and Moser at ETH uh, Zurich uh, showed that it was intimately related to the random to random methods, very much like Waxat, which we use for satisfiability. Uh, and so, so this is one of the topics that I that I was going to include in another part of. Um, computer programming, but uh, but it, it fits in nicely with the story of satisfiability, so I put it into this chapter. And and uh, and the interesting thing here is that it um, it's connected with the game of Tetris. I don't know if you've ever played Tetris, but uh, uh, the, uh, 
there's a beautiful theory uh, uh, called the theory of traces that's, in, that's involved there. And, uh, and uh, well, I once thought maybe it's so, the theory is so important that we got to teach it to everybody in high school. Maybe, maybe that's a little over ambitious, but, uh, but it is a, 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 something I think is, it, it is worth knowing. Uh, when in computer science, we deal with, with, with strings. Uh, which are uh, uh, where you have uh, words in, in many variables, and and, and uh, x y is different from y x. The order in which you write the letters is important as as, as when you're writing words uh, in in, in uh, German or English. But uh, uh, and then we also have polynomials where x y is equal to x y, where the variables are committed to. Well, traces falls in between where some variables. Uh, are, are commute with each other, others other variables don't, and that's what, that's where we get a very beautiful theory. And, and uh, uh, one way to understand it is in a picture like this, where where if two if if, if, if two pieces in this diagram uh, uh, interfere with each other, then then the order matters. Uh, like, like the C has to appear on top of the B, um, uh, but on the other hand, the C and the E. Are independent of each other, so so they can be so so. Well, there's, 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 there's a really pretty theory there uh, involving um, involving this so-called theory of traces, and it ties in um, to satisfiability solving as well as uh, as well as the, the, uh, the local limit. So so that's why I had this excursion in the middle of my satisfiability study uh, to the theory of traces. <coughs> Okay, then uh, I mentioned that physicists got interested in random satisfiability and, and they developed a message passing strategy which is like uh, 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 people in artificial intelligence use for belief propagation and things like this. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's the next part here. It's a start section, but, I, but, but here's a algorithm uh, called survey propagation that solves satisfiability will be problem with, the, uh, with a million variables, um, and and these are way beyond the capacity of uh, capability of any other uh, uh, other um, uh, any other kind of sad seller. Uh, uh, um, it doesn't seem to work except on these random problems, and only on the case where the problems are satisfiable. But boy, it's quite, it's quite a thrill to satisfy to satisfy one of these million variable problems. Uh, uh, because it's just unbelievable that the number of possibilities is two to the one millionth power. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the next part of the thing. So, so, so I walked you through the, um, the uh, what I've written so far, um, and and there's also a bunch of exercises. Um, except here, I've got a lot of exercises number 99. As I write the book, I haven't decided what order the exercise is going to be in. And, and, and I, so if an exercise is, 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 is in the order I, I sort of think it's going to be in, but I haven't ever referred to it anywhere else, I'm, I'm still calling it number 99 in this, in, in this uh, preliminary uh, draft here. Um, but, there's, uh, but, but there's lots of really fascinating exercises here. And, uh, uh, and after, the, after the exercises, uh, there's uh, um, I'll just I will pass it through the exercises. Uh, one, one of the things that that uh, happened as I'm writing this, uh, uh, it turned out that that there was so much to write about satisfiability. Uh, uh, it, I, I got 120 pages in this draft, and and uh, I imagine it's going to be 200 pages by the time I'm done. Uh, so, so this is uh, this is a very this is a rather long section. I'm going to have maybe 300 exercises in the section. So, so you say, how how are you ever going to find an exercise that you're not going to sit there and do all 300? Um, and, and and the answer is that the uh, uh, the exercises follow the text pretty much. So so, so every word the, the text refers to an exercise. It'll say see exercise you know 35 or something like this. Then, then all the exercises around 35 are the ones that relate to that, that particular part of the story, and uh, um, and, and uh, 
So the, the, the exercise sort of followed right, uh, the others. And I, the alternative would have, would have been to break this section up into in maybe 10 parts and have just put there one tenth of the exercise in each part. Uh, but this is already called section 7.2.2.2, and I didn't want to go to a fifth level of, uh, 